Hello once again, weary traveler. Congratulations, you've survived the year, and once again made it this far into Paleo Rewind. How exceptional. Okay, I'm done. Greetings, hello ladies and gentlemen, David aka Spiner Dude here to bring you August of Paleo Rewind 2022. A big thank you to Edge for asking me to be part of this once again, and let's dive into it because we've got a lot of cool stuff to dig into. Remember the absolute meme of a creature, Cotylorhynchus? Well, a close relative of the living beer keg was unearthed in France, introducing Lilaudorhynchus gondii. I hope I'm saying that right. Despite the specimen being on the larger side, the fossils featured both immature and mature features, which is also present on other large relatives from its family. Juveniles seem to grow much faster and the adults much slower, and the team working on the paper says that delaying skeletal maturity would have enabled them to attain very large sizes by having an extended period of growth. Sedimentological analysis seems to point towards Lilaudorhynchus spending time both on land and underwater, potentially living a hippo-like lifestyle. Just not chasing down cars full of tourists because, uh, there weren't any. A sauropod from what is now Colombia during the Jurassic period was unearthed in South America back in 1943, and just this year was properly identified and given a name. Introducing Perigosaurus la Paz, a brand new member of the Eusauropoda clade, known from a single vertebra. The animal lived in tropical lowland forests about 175 million years ago, and its discovery adds to the widespread species, including sauropods, that inhabited low altitudes during the earlier Jurassic suggesting the animals dispersed and diversified really quickly following a potential anoxic event. A fragmentary animal, but still cool we were able to learn so much about it and its environment. I'm just cutting straight to the chase with this one. Introducing Jacopil Caniocura a new Thyria foreign from Argentina. One of my personal new favorite dinosaur discoveries. I mean, just look at this little dude. Although we don't have a ton of material from it, the fossils do show us that this tiny five foot animal had really short arms, pointing towards bipedal locomotion like its relative Scutellosaurus. Jacopil also represents the first definitive Thyria foreign from Argentinian Patagonia, and has features from basal ornithischians, basal Thyria forens, and ankylosaurs. Seriously, a cool discovery and peak character design with the current reconstructions. Well done, Thyreophora. A large order of ray-finned fishes called Pachycormiforms inhabited ancient oceans all the way from the Jurassic through the Cretaceous. They were a diverse group morphologically, from the absolutely alien Protosphyrina to the more popular and downright massive Leedzichthys. And now a new species, dubbed K.K. Lafkin, was unearthed in Patagonia just this year. K.K. grew up to just over six feet long and was found with fish remains in its stomach cavity. Fishes be neat, man. A new Chasmosaurian ceratopsian was identified this year, and interestingly enough, from a fossilized skull that's been held in museums for decades now. Previously classified as belonging to the genus Pentaceratops, introducing Bistaceratops froseorum. The nearly complete skull of the animal was unearthed in 1975, and upon further study this year was found to be two million years younger than Pentaceratops itself. Discoveries like this make you wonder what other new species are hiding amongst material we've already done dug up. Paleontology is a pretty young science in the grand scheme of things, and we're constantly learning more. The oldest semi-aquatic rodent in North America has been unearthed, introducing Microtheriomus articula aquaticus. That's a name. Also representing the world's oldest amphibious beaver. Rodents are the most diverse group of mammals on the planet today, and they can teach us a lot about mammalian evolution. In the case of Microtheriomus, it was really small, estimated at less than two pounds, as opposed to a modern day adult beaver weighing in at about 50 pounds or so. Although Microtheriomus was semi-aquatic, it did not yet have a flat tail to help it swim like modern beavers. A cool discovery for sure, helping us learn more about the origin of our flat-tailed buck-toothed friends. Are you guys ready for one of the coolest marine reptile names? 
Well, introducing Thalassa Titan Aatrox, a new massive Cretaceous Mosasaur unearthed in Morocco. Estimations put it at about 30 feet long. While most Mosasaurs featured long jaws and slender teeth, the 5-foot skull of Thalasso Titan featured a short, wide snout equipped with thick conical teeth, more similar to modern orcas. It suggested that the animal evolved to hunt larger marine reptiles rather than feeding on smaller organisms. A really cool and unique new giant Mosasaur for sure. And the final one I have for you today, a brand new giant sauropod is being unearthed in Portugal. Estimations put the animal at over 80 feet long and belonging to Brachiosauridae. A property owner in Portugal reached out to the paleontologists when he noticed the remains in his yard while carrying out his work. And what's really fascinating is that all of the ribs of the animal are maintaining their original anatomical position in their resting place. Let's hope that if they keep digging, they'll find even more material belonging to this giant. Well, that's it for me for Paleo Rewind 2022. A big thanks to Edge for the invite to do this once again, and I hope you all enjoy the rest of the rewind as we move on into September. Good luck, traveler.